Good morning, Music Theory. Um, I, I'm going to be doing a couple videos here and there to to go over some things and, and that way you have a resource when it comes to some of the different things that you're doing. Um, what I'd like to do today is go over kind of the last thing that we did um, in class, which was talking about voice leading. Um, more or less what I'd like to do is, is I'm going to post some things to the Google Classroom for theory uh, to where you can look at some different things and it'll give you a chance if if your grade needs to be raised, especially uh, where I can give you some assignments to, to get that grade up um, and, and level up and, and do some different things like that, okay? Um, so what I'd like to do is, is go over just a few things about um, principles of voice leading. I'm going to use the book a little bit. Um, I'm going to try to put some things up to where you can see them, um, where I can do some things like that. Um, and you can take screenshots if you need it uh, and go back and, and review some of those things. So let's just review a, a couple of things. And this is going to look a little bit like an elementary teacher, but that's okay. Okay, so what I'd like to do is let's just review some of these terms that we were talking about um, in principles of voice leading. The main things I'm, I'm looking at are voice leading, harmonic progression, part writing, and counterpoint. Uh, those were things that we talked about kind of in that last week that, that we met. Okay, um, Voice leading or part writing may be defined as the ways in which chords are produced by the motions of individual musical lines. Um, that's that's going back to what we were talking about with the contour of, of the shape of, of the notes and the melody. Um, so figuring out that part writing. Closely related term is counterpoint, okay? Uh, which refers to the combining of relatively independent musical lines Naturally, the style of voice leading will depend on the composer, the musical effect desired, and the performing medium. However, there are certain voice leading norms that are most tonal composers follow most of the time, and our study will concentrate on these norms. So what we're looking at right now is harmonizing the chords using our, our diatomic Roman numerals and f trying to fit in the parts from the bass note and, and spelling out those chords and then doing so not just vertically. If you remember when we left, we were talking, we were concentrating so much on vertical. Now it's time to concentrate on the horizontal and make sure that every chord that we are setting up is fitting in the linear line, okay? Um, so there are three things that it's asking us to focus on. It's asking us to focus on rhythm, uh, at this moment, I'm a little less worried about rhythm. Uh, that's more going to be involved in your melody. Right now, I'm more focused on the tone than the rhythm. Okay, Harmony. Every melody note should belong to the chord that it's harmonized to and the contour of the melody. Okay, When we left, we were talking about how there are different shapes of melody and how some make sense and, and some don't. Um... So one of the things that we're looking for is how the melody notes are matching what we're doing. I'm sorry, because I, I unplugged this as I've got all this stuff plugged in. So there were different kinds of melodies that we listened to before we left. And it was saying, it was showing how some of them are good examples and some of them are uninteresting and things like that. So just as a reminder, just as a reminder, this was an example of a good melody uh, as far as contour is concerned. Okay, so it, it moves up and moves back down and and it works out that way. Okay, and I'll, I'll move this a little bit closer over here. This was one that had a, an uninteresting contour. Okay. 
So it's still an okay melody, but it's just, it's, it's boring, okay? Um, this one was one that had two focal points. It had two times where it kind of hit that apex. So it, it, it doesn't really lead somewhere. It kind of leads and comes back and leads and comes back, okay? Um, leaps. When you're trying to figure out your melody, you're trying to avoid augmented intervals, sevenths, and intervals larger than an octave, okay? Remember, we're trying to create simple melodies. We're not jumping around and doing crazy stuff right now, okay? Um, a melodic interval larger than a fourth is usually best approached and left in the direction opposite to the leap, okay? So we're not jumping, 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 okay? Uh, tendency tones, and this, we talked a little bit about this, and, and y'all can hear this as well. Um, sevens want to move to ones, okay? Um, fours want to move to threes, and things like that. So, you know, as we're going through different things, and you, you know, if your melody doesn't want to go back up, Okay, once you go to that four, it doesn't really want to go back up. It wants to go down, okay? And the easy one to hear, obviously, um, you know, if you're going through your melody, you know, we want to move to that, that eight. All right, so remember, if it makes somebody go, hmm, it's probably not the simple melody that we're looking for in, in trying to create something right now, okay? All right, so... Um, what we're going to, what we're trying to do and what I want you to try to do is there's, there's lots of apps that you can use on your phone. Um, there are lots of free apps where you can, you can have a piano, you can have a keyboard and try to create some of these chords. Okay. So what I, what I want you to do is to take a look at, um, the, the page I'm about to put up here, okay? And you're gonna take a look at these chords right here. All right, so what you have on each one of those is you have a bass note and you have a soprano note. You've got the key for each measure and you've got a Roman numeral in each measure, okay? I'm leaving this up here for a long time for you to, to get a screenshot. I'll, I'll get a little bit closer. Get you a screenshot. Okay. And what I'd like for you to do is try to cr fill in. All right. So you see up here on these, these are alto. It's only got the alto written. So this is going to be three parts. This has got alto and tenor. So this is going to be four parts. Okay. You see that some of them are minor. Some of them are major. And you must follow the Roman numeral. Okay, so this would be a minor six in the key of F. Okay, so whatever the Roman numeral is, you have to follow it. Okay, and trying to build in those chords. That there will just give you a little bit of review about building the chords. And then what I'd like for you to do in, in some of those keyboard apps, if you if you have those, is then play them. Okay. Try to try to fill them out and see if they're if they're what you think they should be. Okay. Now for those of you who are who are kind of at this level already and ready to move on uh, to some other things. Um, what you can do is you can start taking some of those um, uh, common progressions, okay? We were talking about ones to fours to fives, kind of living in that area. What I, what I really want y'all to start doing um, as we keep going is start creating, okay? Start writing out melodies, and bass lines and using those don't get too complicated this is not you trying to write your you know beethoven's fifth this is you just trying to experiment a little bit you can send those to me you can take pictures put them on google classroom 
uh, where I can take a look at them and, and we can play with some things and try to create uh, that way, okay? Um, so the last thing I'd like to do is for those of you who are creating melodies, what I want you to do is I want you to be careful about a couple of the rules when it comes to, to part writing, okay? So there are a couple of things that you're trying to avoid as you're writing these chords, okay? What you are trying to avoid are things called parallels, okay? In these parallels, what is happening is you have parallel fifths and parallel octaves. What that means is as you are moving through, you've got a chord that goes from a fifth to a fifth, an interval of fifth to fifth in the, in the chord. And what that does in the interval from a fifth to, fifth to a fifth, as we see, let's see, a B to F sharp. Let me put it on hold. So B to F sharp, and then F sharp to, to C sharp, back to B to F sharp. Now, what that does is it's, it, it, it's moving from this right here is a fifth, interval of a fifth. Then it moves directly to the next fifth on both of those notes, and that's called a parallel fifth. That's something you're going to want to avoid. Uh, it's not something in tonal music uh, until the 20th century that we're really uh, wanting to have, okay? Same thing in octaves, okay? So you've got these parallel octaves, B and B, F, F, B, B, to where your melody is moving parallel in those octaves. And those are some things that we're trying to avoid, okay? So as you're doing your part writing, when you are trying to fill out these chords, you need to take a look and make sure that as you're spelling these things out, that you're avoiding these parallel fifths and these parallel octaves. So what that means is as you're trying to do those, um, be looking at those inner parts and make sure you're not just following that same thing because then then you you do start getting... Uh, some of these places where, where the bass line is just kind of living in one area all the time. And it never goes anywhere, okay? So um, play around with that. Experiment a little bit with that. Go ahead and make you a simple melody, okay? I, I, I want you to take this time um, as we're trying to do some new things and talk about some new things. I really do want you to take more of this time to experiment and try to create. Um, we're, we're in a time now where, you know, you've got time on your own um, and you can try to create your own things. Even if you're in levels three, four, five, six, you still have enough of the skills to where you can write a simple melody and I can help you harmonize it and we can start creating um, some things while you're on your own, okay? So if anything, we'll leave this with our with our quarantine songs. That's, that's really what I'm looking for, is for you to be able to come out of here with something in your hand and say, this is what I created during this time, okay? So I'm gonna post this to the Google Classroom um, uh, and we'll try to get everybody on there uh, so that we can keep doing uh, working through this together. All right.